So my question is for those people that did not finish with 70% in the last two years, like the accumulative average, can their years of experience suffice for it? Because I believe that there will be people watching us that did not finish with 75% cumulative average, but they've probably been working for five, 10 years, you know, in that law field. So can it suffice for it? If I go by what is on the school's website, the admission requirements, mm -hmm. it states a cumulative weighted average of at least a 70% in the last two years of study. But I could persuade the um, admission committee, mm. but I am not in the right place to say whether it will or not. I don't know what they decide at the admission committee level. I mean, I had six pages of documents or something. It's a three. It's a something. <laughs> I'm as shocked as you guys. That's all I can say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is YMC. If you're seeing my face for the first time, you know what to do already. Subscribe, okay? So this is going to be a follow-up video on the previous video that I shared on my channel. I'm going to leave the link somewhere for you just so that you can check that one first before checking this one. She's going to be talking about visa processing. So even though I have a video on my channel explaining my visa processing and everything, I explained in that video that I did it with an agent. So she did hers um, by herself. So she's going to be telling you everything that you need to know, basically. Hi, everyone. My name is Olagun Joanu. I'm a graduate of law student at USASC. I'm mm -hmm. doing my master's of law in environmental and natural resources. And today I'll be talking about my visa application um, and everything in between. And um, let me just put a disclaimer there. This is my <laughs> personal experience. This mm -hmm. is how I wrote my thing. It might be different from what every other person did. So um, this is just my thing. Let's get into it. <laughs> The first thing I'll be talking about is my funding because that's one of the major issues people have when they are writing their letter of explanation. Because I got um, a 20,000 CAD um, worth of scholarship, mm -hmm. it made the whole um, funding thing very easy for me. But I didn't just stop at that. I could have stopped at that, but I did not want to risk anything. I wanted to tie all ends. Mm -hmm. So um, I did a breakdown of my cost of attendance, which I'll be sharing with you guys. So my tuition was about 8,096 CAD. My student fee was about 1,054. And then um, my living expenses, you're supposed to show that you can afford um, your living expenses. So my living expenses, I put it at $10,000 for, for a year. year. Yeah, good. So everything together was about 19,150 CAD. Mm -hmm. I remember I got 20,000 CAD. So it covers the whole entire thing, but I did not want to stop at that. I did not want to risk anything. You get. So um, my sponsor gave me 12,000 CAD. Apart from the 20,000, of course. That my school sponsor, gave you. Yeah, apart from the 20,000 school gave me. My sponsor gave me 12,000 CAD. Mm -hmm. And then myself, I don't get money now. <laughs> I did my own 3,000 CAD, my mm -hmm. widow's might. Mm -hmm. So everything was about 35,000 CAD. So compared to my cost of attendance, which was 19,150, I had 35,000 on the other hand. So mm -hmm. that was way more than what was required. Some people left it at 20,000 for what the school gave them and added their own money to it. And they got the visa. So. It depends on what you want to do. I just did not want to leave anything to chance. Mm. Apart from the 35,000 um, CAD that I showed, I was interested in um, applying for express entry because I got my admission in May and then I applied in June. And then school was supposed to resume by September. So, you know, I did not want to slow down things. So I thought, okay, the best thing would be going for um, NSE. That's mm -hmm. Nigerian Student Express. Mm -hmm. So, and then for that, you would require um, my bank statement of about 10 million naira. Yeah. And then um, your IELTS result. So mm -hmm. I wrote IELTS. And people keep asking, do you need IELTS to apply for masters at USASC? You don't need IELTS to apply for masters at USASC. I only wrote IELTS because I wanted to opt for the fast track. Mm -hmm. You understand? Not because I wanted to gain admission. In fact, I wrote my IELTS after I already applied. So it wasn't it wasn't a thing. It wasn't uh, a criteria. But when I was applying, I need to quickly add that I uploaded a proof of English sufficiency certificate, which my school issued to me. Mm -hmm. That suffices as my English um, proficiency test. 
So my school issued me that certificate and I uploaded it and that was it. I did not have to write any English test for my admission. Mm -hmm. The IELTS was for my NSE, like I said. Okay, So sorry, just to cut in quickly. So the NSE is an acronym for Nigerian Student Express. So I know that a lot of people will be watching us across the world. So, but this one is strictly for Nigerians. Just the same way there is the student SDS for the Asians and the Indians. So this one is strictly for Nigerians. And I have a video on that. I'm going to link it somewhere at the top for you. So that one gives like a breakdown of whatever you need to understand about the process. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, MC. For that, I provided an extra 10 million naira and then IELTS. So that was that. That's way different from the 35,000 I already mentioned. Mm -hmm. That was just for NSC. So that was that for my proof of funds. That was all I needed to show. But like I said, some people left it at their 20,000 CED and the money they had in their account and they got the visa. That is a place of grace. <laughs> just pray that your visa officer they will not be angry or she is in just charge of your application. That he has on his head. So if mm -hmm. I on his head, he can just, you know, pass you and then you get your visa. But mm -hmm. that's, that's for me, Sha. The next thing I'll be talking about is my proof of home ties. So when I was applying, I also watched several videos and I learned that the best proof of home ties would be your study visa from your office. Study leave. Study leave. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Study leave from your office. Because I was already practicing in law firm, I applied for study leave mm -hmm. from my office and my boss was gracious enough to grant me a study leave. He wrote a letter directly to the um, Canadian Embassy and then he included the fact that um, the office allows me to go for my study leave mm -hmm. and then for as long as I want to do my um, program. When I was submitting my um, document, I uploaded that, that I have a study leave from my office. And then I made it so obvious that I will be returning upon the completion of my program. You get, since my boss already included it in the letter. Anyways, so I also included it in my, in fact, I made it so bold. Mm -hmm. So that the user officer will not say that I not see it like that. <laughs> so I made it really bold that, yeah, I'll be coming back after my program in support of what my boss had already mentioned in the letter. Mm -hmm. So th that was that for study leave. It's one of the strongest ways to prove home ties, one of the strongest. So another thing I did was to prove my home ties was my landed properties. I executed some deed of gift. I, okay, I had some gift, deed of gift. It was prepared by some lawyers and then um, some properties that were given that were given to me by my dad. I included that in my home ties. Mm -hmm. I included the sale of land agreement. And as lawyers, I'm sure you know the documents that entails when it comes to deed of gift. Make sure it is properly notarized. And then I must quickly add that most of your document that you'll be uploading for your uh, visa application should be notarized i think they have a thing here for um notary public and then they are um i don't know what that is but instead of going to the high court to stamp your document i mm -hmm. think you should opt for a notary public notarizing your document instead mm -hmm. that's for my own personal um, i didn't do that though boy okay yeah. for most of my documents i got a notary public to notarize mm -hmm. most of them in fact, i think all my documents i got a notary public to notarize most of Everything. them for me so my leader of gifts was notarized and i swore so many affidavits as lawyers, you know how the thing be. You know how we like to, you know, <laughs> go extra mile. You know, go extra mile. You get. I had my affidavit of good conduct. I also had some investment with some companies. I I had to reach out to them to swear some affidavit that I actually invest in those companies, mm -hmm. and then I got them notarized. All my documents I needed um, extra parties. I made sure they swore to some affidavits. Even mm. my sponsor, I made sure my sponsor, even though it was a family, but I made sure he swore an affidavit of sponsorship. Mm. In Nigeria, we have several affidavits, and there is no um, empty number of affidavits you can swear. You get so I had various affidavits, affidavit of confirmation of accounts, affidavit of. <laughs> but that's for me. You don't have to do that. It's not a criteria. It's not. It's not a mandatory requirement, so mm -hmm. nobody is telling you to go and show your affidavit in the world. That's mm -hmm. just what worked for me. I'm talking about my own personal experience. Another thing I included was my police character certificate. I don't know if you had shared anything about that before. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. that that was that. For people who okay, let me quickly add this. You have to pay me for this info. <laughs> Okay. For people who are applying for PR and also want to apply for masters, I, I want you to know that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Canada allows dual intent. At the point of applying, you can um, swear an affidavit of dual intent. So in that affidavit, you can include the fact that you are applying for PR and you're also applying as just student. for them to know as a student. 
you know, you know, you swear to abide by the rules and all of that. I've seen people swear that Afida fit. I've seen it in like two different places. Mm -hmm. So you can swear that Afida fit that you are not breaching the rules, that you are doing the right thing. It's legal and all of that. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's not a must. This is just me. This is just. And I think that majorly it's for me in my own ties. The other things that I included. Travel history. Let's talk about okay, that. Okay, travel history. So Yemi yeah, told me that for her, travel history was a big deal. Yeah. In my first application, I got rejected for my travel history, and it prompted me to travel. I'm sure you guys already know the video. I put it up somewhere here. But I also had to explain. I think I mentioned I also had to explain in my letter of explanation. That's the second time I was applying. I had to explain why I had not traveled before then. I explained due to work, due to wow. my friends. Ooh, yeah. Due to my friend. It's part of it though. Travel history. Don't wow. know if this is the first time you are traveling okay, and then if you history. go back no okay. so if you have traveled before you must have been traveling to places and you live there they want to know if yeah, you will leave okay. at the end of the program as okay. you have specified in your mm -hmm. um letter so when i reapplied i had to put all the stamped pages of my international passport in my second application but she never traveled and she got it so i want her to quickly share her own experience so uh, like Missy said i also saw a template of an loe and then the person included travel history and then also put up stamped pages of our passport. Oh, okay. Like Missy said, I saw that. Well, because I never traveled, I didn't see any reason to even talk about it at all. My LOE was about intersections. So some people will put traveling history as another section. I did not even do that at all. Like, I completely removed it. I did <laughs> not want to talk about it so that it will not raise some sort no, of, you know, raise you know any brow. about it. You get yeah. So I did not even bother talking about traveling mm -hmm. history at all. Okay. So if you don't have any travel history, I hope like me. You can still get the visa. <laughs> I hope like me. You can, you can still, still get, get the visa. visa. It's not a deal breaker. I don't think it's a deal breaker. Just like I said, just pray for grace. As long as your your visa officer is not the type that likes traveling. Maybe mine did not, not really like, want to travel. <laughs> so it wasn't a big deal for me. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, a lot of people have actually said that it's not a must. must. So it's just maybe some people. So so the thing that I at the end of the day I feel the major thing they look out for is funding. Mm -hmm. but they now start looking out for other things like if you've been traveling before then that means that you're financially buoyant enough to so, travel yeah, across the world and yeah. also be able to afford your tuition as you have specified and then mm -hmm. be able to live at the end of the day yeah. so it just depends like any different visa officer with different things they are looking out for oh. Yeah. so yeah that's basically it anything you want to share again my own guys that's what i can disclose so if you have any other proof anything that shows your connection to nigeria if you have land if you have businesses if you have family in nigeria anything to prove that you know what i'm coming back to nigeria i have my family here i have my property i have my business here i have whatever it is here you can you can prove that then i wanted to take it a notch higher again i like overdue <laughs> <laughs> i approached my parish priest i'm catholic by the way so i told him to write a character reference letter for me that he can vouch for my for me and um, i'm of good character and mm -hmm. i'm not going to run away i'll come back when it's time so i got him to do that and then yeah i did and i also put that in my application mm -hmm. i don't know if it's carry weight or not carry weight but i got the visa shall. <laughs> so if you want to be like me if you want to you know take things a little bit higher mm -hmm. it's not a must but if you want to be like me you can you can go ahead there is no limit to what documents you can provide attach, to yeah. proof um attach everything so you attach i mean i had about 80 pages of documents or something 83 80 something <laughs> i'm as shocked as you guys that's all i can say <laughs> wow that's why i used to tell people to make sure that they tighten all the holes because see someone attaching a three pages <laughs> with with notorized stamps and you're there just putting anything in here <laughs> To be too easy no, to deny savvy. himself. It's, it's over savvy, you know, it's over savvy. You don't have but to be I, like that. Yes, yeah, so because like a lot of people are coming to Canada, we know, and for different reasons. So you just have to go a step for that. I don't have the why. art of art break. If you break my art once, I can I can just, you know, break down for your year. So I don't need to just do it once and get it. Mm -hmm. I don't have that heart for that kind of break. Ah no, don't break my heart like that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much everything, right? Yeah. I think that's it okay so as usual you can ask us further questions in the comment section and should be available to answer all of your questions i'm sorry that i've not gotten to my dms lately i keep apologizing because hmm, in choke 
it choke. <laughs> we are getting towards the end of the semester, so it's a bit difficult for me to mm -hmm. like. <sighs> That's all I can say. Anyway, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. She doesn't want to share her socials. Follow me on IG, MS underscore EMC. I like this video. Liking helps more people to see this video. Like I said, we've not seen anyone do this before. So like this video so that a lot of people get to see this video. Share this video to friends and family members. Subscribe. It's going to help a lot. Okay? I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, EMC. I'm out. Thank you for having <laughs>